Welcome back. This is Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbitha Mwema. In studio, we are joined by a real estate analyst, Brenda Mwangi from Asaitan Investment. Welcome to the show, Brenda. Thank you for having me. Did you have a chance to listen to the president's address or to just get a synopsis of what you were saying and what does that mean for the particular real estate sector that you cover? So, but then unfortunately, I've not been, oh, okay. had a chance to, I, okay. to listen to it, but All I'm right. sure I'll catch up okay. with it later. I, I think what he was saying is... Uh, he was saying he wants to focus more on the economy, and he did say that the big four agenda still stands, and he's, uh, he's suddenly going to be looking for funding to get into that sector. Is that a positive overall for your sector, or was it already expected and planned for? To start with, with an improvement in economy, then it definitely means better uh, business environment yes. for the real estate industry. Okay. And when the government continues to focus on affordable housing, then... Uh, uh, as people who focus mainly on housing, we feel like it's going to be a plus for us. And we can, we've seen the efforts mainly through the budget allocation to affordable housing. Okay. We've seen the incentives being introduced. So I think it's a plus for us if the government seems to get to focus on okay. that. It's, it's going a, to be it's a plus. For a us. plus. Yeah. All right, so this is a very good report written by Saiton with regards to the outlook for 2020. Are you able to give us an overview of what your expectations are across a broad place and investment classes before we delve into the real estate sector? So looking at the economy as it was last year yes. and what, what we expect in this year. Okay. So for last year, I expect the GDP to come in at around 5.6% okay. and improve actually to the, towards the end of this year to around 5.7%, yes. which means we are positive. Uh, we expect that to be, despite it being a marginal increase in terms of the economic growth, uh, we expect it to be there and we expect this to be felt across the investment industry. Across the investment yeah. industry. Okay. So do we... What about the real estate sector? So if the economy, your report does say you expect economic growth of about 5.7% in the year 2020, what does that portend for the real estate sector? So for the real estate sector, we are neutral on it, mainly because of the tough economic times that have been there. Uh, we have a very huge supply in some sectors. So we expect this to continue resulting in um, subdued performance for the real estate sector. However, with uh, the hope or with the anticipation of an improvement in the economic uh, environment, then we expect there to be a peak in the real estate industry. Though not as, we're not as ambitious as we were previously, okay. uh, around this time we are a bit slow. Okay. Yeah. So does that mean for the next two to three years, because now we're about to get into the election cycle, so we start, BBA has already taken center stage, we're at the space where do we go referendum or does it get approved by parliament? Does this cycle actually have any interferences with regards to the real estate sector for the next two to three years? Yeah, for the real estate sector is very sensitive in terms of uh, politics or okay. political stability. When the environment is very friendly, we get we tend to have more people willing to invest, willing to take, um, to take risk into investment. So we expect the minute we start having political anticipation here and there, that is likely to affect the real estate sector. However, the next two years, we are positive that we are likely to have a good stability. Okay. Uh, as we've seen, despite the BBI being there, the, the stories on the referendum, the real estate sector has not been affected yet. Okay. So we are positive that within the next two years, we still perform uh, without the politics being an issue. Okay, so what yeah. are the drivers? You're neutral on the industry. What? What are, what are, when you talk about real estate at, in, at the beginning of 2020, what are the key considerations for anybody who wants to look at this as an asset class? So first of all, the key drivers that we are expecting to drive the sector, first of all, is the improving macroeconomic environment with that projection of GDP growth. Uh, so we expect there to be more business in 2020 and that's a resultant increase in real estate activities. We also anticipate that the continued focus on affordable housing, as I mentioned prior, is going to result in increased uh, activities, especially in the residential market. So we also expect the government to focus on infrastructure, uh, mainly because infrastructure opens up areas for investment. Okay. So if it continues to focus on infrastructure, and that is that has been evident by the budget allocation. This, uh, this financial year 2019-2020 was slightly higher than last year. So we are positive that that improvement is going to, to result in increased property prices. So despite us not being very ambitious in terms of high returns this year, yes. we are still we're neutral because we expect such factors to cushion the sector. Okay, so as long as money is flowing in the economy, then it becomes a slight positive for the real estate sector. Yeah. So today earlier the president did say that he will be raising about 150 billion via an infrastructure bond. And really his focus was he wants to see more money um, flowing into the economy. And he addressed the issue of pending bills and said that is something that he feels that they're on track to clear anything 
something that is verifiable. In an, in, I mean, what he's trying to say is he wants money um, re, uh, getting into the economy and people be compensated for work that they're doing. Could this be a possible trigger for at least uptake of housing in the next two to three years if it actually comes to fruition? Yeah, most definitely. You see, all this time we've been complaining about the inaccessibility of financing being a very uh, a key challenge for the real estate sector. Okay. People are not able to access mortgage loans. They are not able to even rent, rent basically, yes. even rent homes because of the lack of money in circulation. So we expect this liquidity to enable people to have better purchasing power. Okay. And if you see the rate cap was repealed, then we expect uh, more banks to be willing to lend. Okay. So if that is achieved, then we'll be in a better place in the terms of real estate. We are working with so many eaves. <laughs> so, okay. Before I, I, th I think at, at this time we just started the year, yes. we can only say if. But you have to we'll act. If you had to act. So today if I told you I have 10 million and you are justifying real estate as, as an asset class, why would you justify it? What returns can I make if I put money into that sector? You see in real estate, yes. the different sectors we have perform quite differently. Tell if us If you look about at the that. outlook, for okay. example, there's a residential sector. Yes. There's the commercial office and retail sector. Okay. And uh, for example, for us as Saiton, we, we do a report in terms of those different themes because you say the different themes perform differently. Yes. For example, in the commercial uh, retail sector, uh, we might have had negative performance during the year, last year. But we have a neutral outlook, mainly because we have seen so many international retailers coming into the country, expanding their okay. foothold. Okay. So that is expected to uh, cushion the sector in terms of returns. In addition to there not being any incoming supply, especially in Nairobi. We don't have any coming supply of retail space. Okay. So for that sector, we have a neutral outlook. Uh, for the commercial office, there's a huge supply, um, an oversupply around of 5.6 million as at end of 2019. 5.6 million square feet. Square square feet. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a lot. But yeah. where is it? Because I can never get a desk to, <laughs> to lease or hire in town. Where is, is the it, space? You see, in, in the CBD, we don't have so many upcoming buildings. Okay. But still, the buildings we have, you don't have 100% occupancy. Right. Occupancy is around 80, 70 there. Okay. Go to areas, business nodes, like Upper Hill, go to Kilimani and Westland. And Westland. There's a lot of space. That There's is a lot. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yes. There's a lot of space there. Yeah, so for that one, given that constraint, and yes. given that the space is actually expected to grow during this year, then we have a negative outlook. For the residential sector, um, looking at the different sectors we have, we have a a huge supply in the high-end market, but that is not what is in demand. Mm -hmm. So that means what is in demand? Is it low end? The low and mid retail. End. What what does that mean? That, is it that is units priced at what price? Uh, for the low and middle, the units priced not above uh, seven point five million for okay. the apartments. Seven point five. Yes. And then that's a range of seven point five. What's the lower? The lower um, range would that be three the, million, the, two million? The lower would go to up to a million. A million. The people who are able to, to provide such units, especially okay. in apartment setup. Oh, for a million shillings. Yes. I want to imagine that a million shillings you can probably get eight to ten percent yield. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because you, especially if you get a unit that is close to business nodes, you know people tend to rent those units. Okay. Yeah. So you expect your occupancy to be high and your yields to be absolutely. Have good. you heard of any of these projects that we can look for? Is Titan doing any of this? Um, one million <laughs> or is it we're working on it we're okay. working on it it's, it's something we're still working on okay and we hope to venture into the same in future mainly because we need as private sector players we need to focus on even supporting the government in terms of affordable housing okay so we have that in mind yeah. all right and this is a question that i keep asking you every time that you come here when we're looking at the real estate sector affordable housing how do people access these units at the government wants to, um, is actually building and is almost done. Some of them are more or less done. How do I become part and parcel of acquiring an asset through the government um, affordable housing program? So we have this platform. The government has this platform called the Bomayango. Yes. And I think the issue has been uh, getting to know how to, to get into that platform. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly logging into that platform and creating a portal or an account. And you're able to um, save the, the, there's a guideline on how you save for the house, okay. and then they learn, uh, they, they'll have a, a lottery and people are located houses. However, uh, I'll begin to mention that the portal has not been very effective, and that, I think that has been the challenge with most people complaining. Do we actually mean what we keep saying? That's, that's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's but um, it's been a technical issue, which the ministry has promised to resolve, so I think we'll just need to be patient. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm probably going to throw you <laughs> to the deep end here, because there's one thing when the president does speak about 
his, uh, his action points with regards to enhancing the economy and building an economic kingdom. And we are, the intent, it's, it's certainly admirable. The spirit behind that intention, it's admirable. But when you look at some of the initiatives, like for instance, affordable housing that have been running for a little while now, it's as though there is a pronouncement that's made, but then there's a bit of a delay and a bit of a lag with regards to implementing this. So then how do we move to the next sector? How do we get to a place where we're saying, um, maybe half the population in Kenya owns a home mm. and has access to that home and if they're not living in that home they're actually benefiting from having a home as an investment class. So I think, I think with, I would call it politics, I think it's the <laughs> governance structure that's, that's okay. in place. Governance. Uh, there's, there's every, there are processes and I think we tend to lose track within those processes because once the president for example has announced something it needs to go for approval and the minister needs okay. to take it up. Okay. So I think it takes such a long period of time, which I think we just barely because of processes. It takes such a big period of time that sometimes we either even forget about it, we don't know whether it was fast tracked, whether it's even there. And I think it's going to be a key challenge if we don't get these things actioned. For example, we keep I think to the towards the last quarter of the last year. Okay. We kept talking about these incentives that are there. I think we even had that discussion. Yes, please, but you can remind us for the benefit of our, of our audience, the yes. incentives for affordable housing. So the, the incentives that have been presented for the developers and for the okay. homeowners. Yes. Uh, the first one is, uh, for example, stamp duty, where if you're first home, uh, first time homeowner, you don't need to pay the stamp duty. So usually a fee that you pay. When was this made effective? I bought a house a while back and paid stamp yeah. duty. <laughs> you see, yes. Uh, so, some of these incentives, for example, that one, in addition to many others, for example, the corporate tax uh, uh, relief for developers, most of these. Okay, are so that if you're, if you're, for instance, if today you and I partnered and became developers, does that mean we can actually apply to the government for affordable housing? For affordable yes. housing, and yes. then you, you, thirty percent, you get. So you normally you pay corporate tax of thirty percent. Of thirty percent, yes. So you now do. you pay half that amount, fifteen percent. However, yes, to this end, we cannot point out and say this developer benefited from that incentive. Okay. For, for the main incentives that were passed during the finance bill 2019, there's so many of them and they've created so much hope, but they were supposed to start uh, being effective January 1st. Yes. And we've not seen any movement, any, any much communication, no guidelines on this is what was passed, this okay. is how it gets okay. to start. So I think it's it, it gets lost in that process and the long way sometimes make it ineffective at the so end So then, then the what happens? Because you sort of have the, the goodwill, the political goodwill and the authority at the very top. So if we're, uh, we're focusing on affordable housing, this is what the president would like to deliver. And you can see his intent. It's yeah. He wants everybody to have access to decent housing and to have access to credit to be able to own their first home as they plan their own future. And, and that's, that's a decent proposal. And it's, it's, it, it actually addresses the spirit of being a Kenyan and you know, being in an economy that is growing and you actually benefit from it. Now then you're saying there's this instance of implementation. So is it that we don't have the technical know-how how to implement or is it that the current regulatory regime does not allow for these changes to happen? Because I could easily register a company today and say, um, I raise funds to actually build a house or to build a set of houses as a developer on the, uh, on the assumption that I would be paying 50% corporate tax, for example. Then how do I make this investment case if it has not yet been implemented? So I think, I think that's the big problem that we have. Okay. And, and we, we need to accept that the problem is there because every time the president is addressing the nation or has a forum, he keeps mentioning these things that trigger people some type of hope. They do. And yet until, until you come and wait for them to be done and nothing happens. So I think it's because there are so many strategic partners that need to be on the same page mm -hmm. for some of these things to go through. For example, you're talking about a tax relief. Kiara is, in, uh, is involved, the ministry is involved, people who need to give approval, the treasury and all that. Okay. So I think there'll need to be that cohesion in terms of the government okay. or in terms of the structures in place for those processes to be fast-tracked for us to see what's the effect we've been doing. Okay. So we need to discount such some of this pronouncements yeah. and that suddenly by a huge margin. You have four key factors here that will shape the real estate sector in 2020. There's affordable housing, there's increased traction in mortgage uh, market, government partnerships and devolution. Maybe you can give us the highlights of this from your report. So for me, those are the main things that we think are going to shape the real estate sector okay. in terms of triggering activities, um, both from the developer side and from the investor side. So for the, um, for the affordable housing, 
we expect this to kick. I, I, I think we would call it to peak, to be at its peak this okay. year. Mainly because we don't have a very long period of time before it gets 2022. <laughs> so I think, it's, I think it's a prime time for the, for the government to push for that agenda okay. aggressively. And as we've seen with the projects, uh, for example, the one that was finished last year, we expect to see more coming into How the market. How many units were this? I think we were around 200 units. 200 units, yeah. okay. But you see, they said the lottery was not run because they didn't have enough people subscribing uh, with the minimum amount of deposit that was required. So for this year, we expect that this is going to be much better. And even looping it to the next point on increased mortgage traction, then we expect the repeal of the interest rate to assist with that. Okay. Also, the KMRC was launched last year. Let me take you back to the element of the interest rate and uh, the, the removal of the cap. When you speak to banks or we, when you speak to capital holders, do you get the sense that they are quick or they are looking at real estate as an asset class? Because the sense that I tend to get is the first point of contact with this rate cap removal is fast moving consumer goods, you know, industries that are, are pretty basic, that are providing basic goods and services, manufacturing, trade and service. Do you get the sense that there is that appeal from the holders of capital to now extend or to open the floodgate with regards to access to credit in the mortgage sector? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's there. It's there. The it's good there. is there. Mainly, okay. mainly because they notice that demand. People have been waiting for that chance. Okay. So at this point, everyone has access to it then given gets better for them as business people okay so they are just there and they will they will in access all right that. fantastic thank you for that clarification mm -hmm. then you were talking about the the launch of the kenya mortgage refinance, refinance company. company so it's supposed to facilitate access to housing loans at a relatively lower rate mainly at a, around nine percent to the maximum uh, and also installments that are a bit flexible for the person who's buying a home so it was successfully launched last year okay um, so we expect to see its effect in the market this year what effect are you expecting uh, more people to be able to access home loans okay uh, but we are still have some I would say a downside of it like we, we still anticipate that there could be challenges to that KMRC all right um, I would want to mention the high cost of debt because if you see at uh, they're promising to give people home loans or housing loans at around 9%. If you look at a normal investor investing uh, in, the, in the bonds, mm -hmm. they'll probably look for around 12.5 to 13.5%. Exactly. So if I'm going to get money at 12.5 and lend at 9, then there's that mismatch. So as much as it was successfully launched, uh, we are skeptical about how much we can achieve. Operationalizing yeah. the strategy. Yeah. And that's, that, that seems to be like a key theme here. It's not that we are short of ideas. Yeah. It's just how do you move from A to Z and ensure that you have successfully implemented. Yeah. Okay, that's a fair point. What about government, government partnerships? What are the expected partnerships in de uh, development and financing? So uh, in support of the big four agenda, first of all, we've seen the government getting to the private sector and requesting for people to come forward and partner with them. So the, the, point, the point they're trying to drive is we're willing to invest in these sectors, we're willing to drive these pillars, the four pillars, but we don't have full capacity to do so, of which the government cannot do it uh, solely on its own. So it's looking for private sector players to partner with it and develop. Uh, for example, the houses. Okay. So we expect that to be there. As much as it was there last year, I, it was not felt as much. Yes. Uh, Why was it not felt? Because I'm about to ask you, if today, say a foreign investor opened up a company and decided, you know, Brenda has um, a good grasp of the real estate sector, let's place $10 million. That's about a billion, uh, a billion shillings into that company. Would you go the next day and partner with the government? government? Let me tell you why people don't partner with the government, first of all. <laughs> you see, the opportunity is there. To partner with the government. Yes. However, look at the existing private public partnerships. Okay. You can you can barely tell how successful they are. First of all, we're working in the government, bureaucracy, slow processes of approval. Mm -hmm. You're an investor who's looking to invest maybe in real estate three to five years. The government projects are taking more than <laughs> five years. years. You can't risk that much. <laughs> you can't risk that money. Yeah. Okay. So there's that in ineffectiveness of PPPs, and we also don't have a clear outline of returns. How do we partner? How guaranteed how, exactly. returns at least? So that mis as much as they want to partner with people, that in clarity that lacks there is still an issue. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Then to your last point, when it comes to devolution, how does this pretend? What, what opportunity does this pretend for the real estate sector? 
devolution is not a new factor or a new shape of the real estate sector, but uh, generally we've seen more focus in county headquarters, for example. We have more manpower, we have a higher number of working class there. Okay. And in terms of budget allocation, then budget is, the budget is being allocated to counties. All so right. we expect this focus to also ensure that there's development with those, those counties, and okay. in terms, even in terms of real estate. All right, fantastic. Yeah. A lot of ifs and a lot of potential. But in 2020, today when you speak to investors, to people who have money and they're considering the real estate sector, what's the one thing that, are you hopeful? I mean, okay, I don't need you to be hopeful because all of us are hopeful. Uh -huh. But what, what are the action points? And I ask this, I mean, just from a simple point of, uh, of action points. If you wanted to invest in the real estate sector, what are the two or three actions that you need to take in 2020 to be a beneficiary of the upside if and when it comes? To start with, I think we need to have it at the back of our mind that real estate still has potential. We still have development returns of up to 25%. How are they with the current situation? We've had so many activities in the Kenyan real estate sector. So first of all, if you're to invest in real estate, mm -hmm. you need to focus first on your research. You need to be very selective of the areas you go for. Because two areas? First of all, it's the areas and the concepts. What, what are the two key, two areas that you'd probably tell somebody, I want to develop, the focus, try and look for opportunities in these two areas? At areas in terms of location, yes. in terms of themes. T uh, location. Location, first of all, outside the Nairobi CBD. Okay. First of all, so there's the satellite towns, and then in give me a name. Give me a name. Satellite, satellite is a good one. I would give Riru, Riru, Ruaka, okay. Siokimau, all right, at the river, all right, yeah. okay. And then the second thing you'd tell them, the concept. Yes, it's it's real estate. It's building. It's development. Pick a good concept. Pick depending on what on the research you've done. So do you we pick commercial? Do you, is you the opportunity you, commercial or retail? If, even if you, you're going to pick commercial, commercial in which area? Okay. Because some of these areas are good. I would have, I've, I've said that the river, but yes. is it good for commercial? No. No. Okay. So the theme and the location is the most important at this point. What, what is the uh, most profitable theme from the research that you've done? Give me one most profitable theme. Is it now moving to one bedroom houses? Is it moving to bed sitters? Is it moving to co uh, shared spaces with regards to commercial? What What's, what's one winning thing that you'd actually put your finger to in this year? Hospitality. Hospitality. And service departments. Okay. Yeah. So service and that's Airbnb. An exactly. Airbnb yes. strategy. Yeah. Fantastic. Are you excited about 2020? Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. hopeful. <laughs> You're hopeful. No, I need you to be excited. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us this afternoon. Yeah. We certainly appreciate it. Yeah. Today we were trying to link what the president is saying and what is happening on the ground. We had Brenda, who's a real estate analyst with Saiten. She's given us an in-depth overview, or rather an in-depth analysis of what she expects in the real estate sector. What you need to do, and what rather what you need to know, is if you're going to invest in places, your location, your theme is most par uh, paramount to any investment decision that you make in the real estate sector. We've had a mention at the river, we've had Siokimau, we've had Riru, and we've had Ruaka. And if you're looking for something to do, it has to be hospitality, service departments. That could be the way to go. What are your thoughts? We certainly want to hear whether you agree with her thoughts and more importantly, are you optimistic and do you see any action points from His Excellency's speech earlier in the day? Thank you for joining us once again. We hope to see you tomorrow same time. Good afternoon.